Hi everyone, Dan Gunner with Insane Forensics. Welcome back to Tech Talk Tuesday, where every week we try to give something to help your threat hunting program. And today what we're going to dive into is we're going to do an overview of Yara, starting out with what it is, and then the basics of writing Yara rules. So let's jump right in. So what is Yara? Yara is a tool for helping match malware. Um, and specifically, we can match off of text or binary patterns in the malware. So when you have a big malware repository like VirusTotal, or if you have you know, folders on your disk full of malware, you could use Yara rules to find out, hey, which samples in this giant malware repository match with these given Boolean conditions or with these text or binary patterns. Um, as I said, it can be used standalone, which is what we're going to show today, or it can be used um, in conjunction and integrated with other tools. Virus Total is a big one. There's something in it called retro hunts to where you can take a YAR rule and say, okay, Virus Total, tell me what you have for this YAR rule. So it helps you look for other malware samples, at least, that have been uploaded to Virus Total. Um, but today, what we're going to dive into is how to write basic Yara signature signatures off of text patterns. Next week, we'll dive into binary patterns. So to get started with Yara, and specifically this standalone version, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the Yara website, which the link's at the bottom of this slide, um, and you're going to go ahead and download the um, packages for it. So on Windows, you have a 32-bit and a 64-bit option. Um, from that, you're going to unzip the file um, and you're going to add the folder that it's on to the path. And what this will do is allow, as you can see in the command prompt there, this will allow you to use Yara without having to reference the folder. So obviously you could reference the folder if you want, but by adding it to the path, you can just call Yara64 um, just like that. So installing it, you actually don't need to go through an installation process. So if you're machines actually locked down from installing software. This is one that's a lot more portable. You don't actually have to run through a whole installer to do it. And jumping into writing rules, so let's get into that. So again, um, Yara rules, there are structure, really three parts to a Yara rule. So top left of this, you'll see there's that metadata section. In the metadata section, you have a lot of option to give it key value pairs. In this case, we gave it a description, you know, people use threat level, people use other um, key value pairs for tracking. This is totally up to what you want to do in this section for the metadata section. When it comes down to the string section, this is where your match or what your matching is going to be. So whether it be text based or binary, um, this is where you're putting the strings that Yara is going to match. And then in the condition field is where you add that Boolean logic to say, okay, you know, match A and B, but don't match C, or, you know, you can do a lot of really sophisticated and advanced stuff down there. Um, in the case, and in this first case we're going to go, we're just looking at the string, I've made a huge mistake. And looking at the top right of this, you can see we created a file1.txt, which says just something tells me I've made a huge mistake, so I will do something else. Um, in this case, right, I've made a huge mistake is in the middle of that string. So when we run Yara, and you can see down at the bottom of the command prompt to run Yara, all you have to do is do the Yara64, Yara32. Um, you give it the rules file or the rules directory. In this case, our rules file is called hugemistake.txt. It's what you see at the top left at this slide. And then what you want to search through. So in this case, we gave it the dot because we're searching files in all files in the given directory. You can also give it a specific file name. But in this case, what we've seen now is we have a match on our rule named huge mistake in file1.txt. So this is working as we expected. Um, this rule again demonstrates a very simple text match of an exact phrase. But you know, let's let's iterate on this rule a little bit, right? So Let's say we don't know the order of those words, right? But we want to see um, matches for when all of those words are in a given file, right? So introducing file two near the top right there, you see file two.txt, um, and in true Yoda format, it's huge mistake comment I've made a. The original rule actually would not match on this, 
But this new rule where we've split out the strings into each of their lines and we put it in variable A, B, C, D, and E, when you look at strings over there, um, we're looking for all five of these words. And now our condition is saying, hey, let me look for all of these strings in the file, right? So in file two, where we move the order of the words in the string around, we're now matching both. Um, words can be broken into you know, different strings if the order isn't known. And this is what you can do. This is where you, know, you get into that Boolean condition. You get into really using that condition statement to hone down. But let's say we add a file three right now. And you know, a huge mistake I've made a, but the H is capitalized at the front. So YAR has something called modifiers. And in this case, when we look at huge mistake try three.txt, which is a third rule we're using, we're going to say, okay, maybe huge is capitalized, maybe it's not. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add the no case modifier to variable D, as you can see in that top left area. Um, and so when we run this rule, we're now matching file three, right? Because we're saying, hey, I wanna see the word huge or the letters huge together, and I don't care about the case of any of those letters, right? So capitalization can be ignored with the no case keyword. We aren't going to dive into many other keywords in today's talk, but definitely if you're interested after this, um, go check out the Yara, um, the uh, documentation for it. If there's a rule you want us to cover, like let us know and we'll actually do future videos on that rule. So if there's one you really want us to dive deep into, like leave a comment um, and we'll definitely tackle into that. But you know, when you get into modifiers, you can begin to deal with situations like this to where, hey, we're getting into capitalization, we're getting into some more variability here. So now we're going to tune the rule even more. Um, and you know, in the first few rules, we've said, okay, look for these words now, but you know, let's update our condition statement and begin to look for strings um, you know, with words that we don't want in there, right? So maybe when you create this rule, you don't want to see, um, in this case, right, we have a uh, file four, right? Huge mistake, I made A, but not you, right? And in the rule we're going to match, we're going to say, you know, huge mistake, I made a, uh, but it's all right. What we can do here is actually add more strings to match to and add a Boolean condition that says, okay, I want you still to match, I've made a huge mistake but I don't want you to match, but not you, right? And we see that, but not you in file four.txt. We don't see it in file five. So when we run this rule through, if you see, we still match our original three files from the last few um, slides that we talked through, but now we match rule five and not four. And if you look at that condition statement, right? We say, okay, match A through E, but don't match all of F and G. Um, the other thing you can do is replace that all with one of, you can replace it with two of. Um, so really, depending on how many you wanna match, um, you can edit that. Same with the condition on the start, right? So in matching strings A through E, if you only wanted to match four of those or three of those, instead of saying all of and seeing those in parentheses, you could say, hey, three of these and not all of these, right? So diving into the condition statement, there's a lot of flexibility you can do um, to tune these rules if you find that, hey, I'm catching a lot of files that I don't want, um, and I know characteristics of those files that you know, are in the files that I do want or they're not in there, you, know, you can begin to update your logic and really hone your rule down to what you're interested in seeing in. So YAR also supports binary signatures. Um, what we showed today are some of the text ones. Um, stay tuned next week, we're going to dive into the binary signature part of that. But today what we really wanted to hit on was what YAR was, um, what the rule structure is, and then some of the basics of getting into YAR rules. So we talked about, you know, we talked about the structure of rules, we talked about the metadata field, we talked about the um, actual string field where you had your rules and then the condition field. So thanks for tuning in this week. We hope to see you back next week.